Hello everybody, welcome back to AG Gaming. Today we are playing a game called Disco Elysium. This is a role playing game where we play as a, a detective. This game was released back in 2019. Apparently this game is have uh, this game have a very good rating at play at Steam. Uh, so let's try and play this game. If you want to play this game, go to Steam Store. Just download this game is really cheap right now. Uh, without further ado, let's get into the game. <coughs> so we have. Oh, we can choose what we can do. A thinker, extremely intelligent, very bad with people, knows interesting facts, come up, comes up with original ideas, sensitive, very psychological, a magnetic personality, <coughs> but unstable, might begin to lose his mind. <laughs> okay, all physical, extremely physical. Interact with crowds through his body, get things done, but dumb as a rock. Uh, so, um, we have an option to create your own character. Let's check it out first. So, we have good intellect good psych with physic with motorics hmm You know what, everybody? Let's try Thinker. I think it's the best bet. The fury is Okay, Here let's begin. Only warm, primordial blackness. Your conscious for men in it. No larger than a single grain of malt. You don't have to do anything anymore. Ever. Oh, there's more. Never, ever. There's more. Never, ever? Never, ever, ever <laughs> baby. <laughs> okay. And an audience amount of time passes. It is utterly void of struggle. No ex-wives are contained within it. So this is great. <laughs> I this is the answer. Uh, give me some more. What was the uh, something? Yes, it is. <laughs> give me some more. You got it, sweet brother. Nothing upon nothing upon nothing. Coming right up, sir. Smooth passy. Alone, see, let's go. I want to get off now. I like pain and burning, like and wanting things from people who don't want to give them to me. <coughs> uh, Do you really? Don't be naive, of course not. <laughs> I want to see the English in his answer. <laughs> and the response. Alright. Nothing town to fuck all bar.
Um, I, I don't know. Is Do you this want island? me to upgrade that to a one-way trip, sir? Uh, Do you really? The song of death is sweet and endless. Ah, just continue. To the ointment, your conscience sticks to it. The limbed and headed machine of pain and undignified suffering is firing up again. Ew. The stench of liquor rises from your mouth. I know it had an ungodly headache. A fiery streak penetrates your skull, trying to force your eyes open. It's a sound. You carry it all from hell. So you know what it is. A good priest can make it up. Yeah. That's it, stop. So, we wake up half naked. So, come on, already, it's empty. No. No, not empty. Can we wash yourself? No? Uh, what's that? A mirror hangs above a bent and broken sink. In a fierce discharge of masculine energy, someone has ripped half the faucet off. Hot water springs from the base and steam covers the mirror. You can suddenly you realize you have no memory of the face that awaits you there. Wipe the mirror. As you slowly reach your hand towards the surface of the mirror. Behold. <laughs> oh man, digging. You have no idea who this thing is, do you? Dear Lord, help me with this. It is, at least it's dead now. There's clearly rigor mortis on your face. Oh wait, is that an expression? Are you trying to make an expression with that face? <laughs> I didn't make any <laughs> Yes, I could. It's horrible. You're scaring yourself. Okay, oh let's stop. God. You can't stop. <laughs> it's like it's not even voluntary anymore. You have worn that grin to your face and now it won't come off. What does it even mean? What is the emotion you're trying to convey? God, I don't know. It's indescribable. <laughs> it's supposed to look suggestive of it. it means for the ladies. I'm insinuating that I'm vaguely sympathetic. I think I'm sort of pulling it off. <laughs> it's sad as been okay. Um. You should check yourself for a pulse. Because from you find no sign of life on your swollen neck. However, putting your hand on your chest reveals an irregular heartbeat. You appear to be alive for now. <coughs> it belongs in the new, 
the third decade of the current century. Enough time had passed from the failure of the revolution that, for a fleeting moment, free market economy seemed like the ultimate uncontested way of life for I, our species. I think this is because we we chosen uh, the genius or the smart character. I think things were good. It was smooth sailing. People made gold and champagne tinted interiors and facades to suit the times, calling this the new style. But more importantly, disco happened. Continue. For Revershop, your city, that meant only one thing. Guillaume La Million. If it doesn't rhyme, you're not pronouncing it right. Guillaume Le Million. I think it does, right? Out of the dazzling swirl of disco music in an open air, what de nuit, somewhere in a river shore west, Guillaume's blonde maid appeared on the screen. He sang some bullshit, then he made the expression. I want to reply with this, but uh, uh, but it will be a longer conversation, I think. But ah, uh, let's click it. <laughs> the click is used to spur on the horse. It also features heavily in Guillaume Le Million's regional mega hit. Don't worry, your pretty little head. Okay, let's... How long ago was it Some 20 odd years. There is a vast ocean of time between right now and the expression. Looking good on you, or anyone. Humanity has run aground in that time. It's a different world now. The expression is a relic. So I adopted it. I adopted it. Why? Everyone loved it. Maybe you thought some of the stardust would rub off on you. Maybe it did. Either way, it's all gone now. Only the grimace remains. You have some understanding of the near history of disco. The rest is darkness. Aside from the useless fact that the motor carriage outside was a Caprice Kinema. It doesn't have to be. You can swoon over Guillaume and his champagne cork smile whenever you want to. Maybe some of the stardust will return. Electrochemistry impossible. Oh no, uh, let's let's mirror view for now. Okay, okay. Uh -huh. Let's check the window. Broken window. The window stands broken in its frame. Cold wind blows in. What's this? Visual cactus. Easy man. It's just the damage. The shards face outward. Whatever broke this window came from the inside. The shelf. Okay. A fine web of scarring covers the back of your right hand, but none of it is recent. More likely a projectile than a hell of it. <coughs> there are no fragments on the floor from pulling a tool back in after impact. Something you've done before. 
It is too large for a bullet, yet too small for a piece of furniture. You're looking for something heavy and larger than your fist. The single green shoe you found fits the hole almost as well as your foot. It would have also been heavy enough if thrown with force. Congratulations. You smashed the window with your own shoe. Now you only have one. Hmm. If you're lucky, you could still find the other one on the balcony outside. Mm, we have to find out you. Be outside your room. Maybe it wasn't me. You mean someone else took your shoe off and smashed the window with it? This person also forced the drinks on you. <laughs> this person also forced the drinks on you. Okay, I should do it. Dashes in. Your toes curl up from. Mm. This fan has two chain pull switches. One ends in a tiny fan, the other in a light bulb. It sh you swoop up and catch the time. Snap! It's released from the blade. What you have in your hand is a truly hideous thing, time, with four or five different patterns. The knot reminds you of a noose. The blades come squeaking to a halt. Okay. Okay, that's the mirror because uh, there's one more task I need to finish there. Uh, okay, let's get our shoe back. So how? Look, look I want to go outside. stands broken in its frame. The morning light hurts your eyes. It's hazy, but you see the ocean and some war-torn buildings. The morning light hurts your eyes. Okay. What else do you want to do? There's nothing left. Stand still. A terrible mistake. Turn the lights off immediately. You can practically the lights are off. Something. Something. There's nothing. Okay, that's locked. Find your tools, unite them again. What's this? Okay. This is like. Oh, uh, I won't bother. Shoes, keys. Bathroom wall. In it, your fate. So, so if we attempt that, then it's uh, it will be a confirmed failure. Um, so, where else? Where else do we need to go? Come on. No.
let's just mm, let's just try it. There's nothing else to try. No. A mirror hangs on the bathroom see. wall. It's too late. Like an image on film. The expression belongs to your primary motor. That's nothing else. The window stands broken in its frame. Cold wit, the morning light hurts your eyes. The fan stands still. The switch must be broken because nothing happens. The air in the room is starting to feel like vaporized urine. Uh, something. Where do you want to go? Where do you want to go? Oh, this, this, there's no clue at all. There's no clue where to go. There's no clue. You hear a jingle. Keys are clinking in the pocket of your flare cut pants. Ah, yes. It says whirling in rags on the aluminum key ring. There is a single key on the ring. The number one is etched on it. It should open the door. The whirling in rags is a hostel cafeteria on the urban coast, frequented by dock workers. So I, I thought so. I thought the key was in was in this pants, but I cannot do anything else. Fifty one. Say hello. The young woman raises a cigarette to her lips. Her eyes are brown and her face is speckled with birthmarks. She can't be more than 28. A silver jumpsuit falls off her like scale armor, sparkling. This is the sparkle of too many nights out on the city. Uh, now? Because you're a police officer, so... I am, yes. Unless you've been feeding us a set of very well-rehearsed lies all this time. You've been here for three days. On official police business, no less. Couldn't say. In truth, so far, mostly drinking. You have no doubt about the drinking. But do you strike yourself as a tight lit drunk? She must have heard something. She nods. There's a mercenary out back. He's been hanged. The body has been there for a week now. The locals probably got tired of it and called the cops. 
I didn't mean to overwhelm you with information. You seem a bit lost, officer. Could it be because of the drinking? She hasn't had time to put her makeup on. This is her morning cigarette. She looks tough. Don't be so harsh on yourself. They let almost anyone be a police officer. <laughs> Don't say that, miss. Of course. Be careful, officer. They don't like the police around here. Something stirs in you as she's about to go. Call it an instinct, a need. The need to ask questions. It's like you said the words a million times before. She looks back at you, a light glinting off her eyes. Yes. The dock workers are pretty cocky. They think they're police enough. At least here on the coast. I can't say about the rest of the city. You're in a hostel, sir. We are in Revachol. Revachol is the disgraced former capital of the world, divided into zones of control under foreign occupation. Half a century after a failed world revolution, she is central to our moment in time. You sure look like you're from Ravishol. Ravishol party. Her accent suggests she is not from around here. She's from Aranye, another part of the world. It's 51. The current century? Centuries don't have numbers. They have names. And this is the current one. Civilization has existed for 8,000 years, sir. You're right. There is nothing funny about civilization. There was the usual ruckus. Loud disco music. I couldn't say. It's impossible to hear people speaking from over there. Oh, yes. Various artists. Ostentatious orchestration prime among them. Oh, that. Yeah. Whoa. The less said about OO, oh, oh, the better. OO oh, oh, were huge where I come from. I was very young then, of course. Like, seven. Life gets hard, but we go on. It would appear so. At around two o'clock, the disco stopped and there was a change of pace. A slow, sad song started playing, like organ music on repeat. That went on for quite a while. Some of the time, you were yelling along to it. Yes, there was a church in there. A really small church. Like the smallest, saddest church in the whole world. It was about that. And also, that it doesn't matter anymore and that we're alone now. It was difficult to tell. The song itself is very quiet and soft, but you sounded like a winded boar, sir. It was hard to understand what you were singing on top of it. Don't be. I was going out later anyway. It didn't bother me. Then you started screaming and trashed the place. That's so me. What did I do? Are you sure I wasn't being lost assaulted? No, yes, I'm a window was smashed. The tape player probably. The song stopped. And furniture too. A real destructathon. There was screaming. Then I think uh, you passed out. There was. There was? I think you screamed that you didn't want to be this type of animal anymore. I may have misheard, but it was sort of memorable. I went out afterwards. Everything was quiet by then. Around four or five. And that was it. Okay, you can go now. Glad to have been of assistance. Okay. Looks like we are 
walking a bit faster. Trample the wonder. That's fine, I'll show yes. That's our shoe. Good. Okay, what else to do? Let's leave her alone for now. Look at the stuff bird. <laughs> Are you the bartender? Um, Are you the bartender? No, I'm not the bartender. I'm the cafeteria manager. He's very animated all of a sudden. This seems like a touchy subject. Mm -hmm. Okay, understood. <laughs> Do I need to ask this question? Look at the stuff bird. A competent work of taxidermy. The white and brown seabird lies among piles of coasters and dry plants, <coughs> one of its wings broken. The man is trying to mend it. Looks like the bird was ripped off the shield that was used to mount it, most likely on a wall. This is the great skewer. The seabird is the symbol for the discovery of the Insulindian Isola, the part of the world you are in right now. The small steel tag says as much. The great score. Stay Kawari score. Look, your buddy is over there. Why don't you go and talk to him, okay? What do you mean by buddy? He pretends not to hear you, concentrating on the bird instead. Okay, I'll leave you. Yeah. First, let's read. Let's read first. Okay. Assign with my service of unit members. You shouldn't keep your colleague waiting. So everybody is saying that this is my colleague. Uh, but first, let's make sure that I'm not talking to anyone. A colourful piece of plastic is dangling from his caravan here. Mm. Makes your feet on the counter rolled out of his open hand. 
you see a blister pack of headache medicine. <laughs> the man does not mind. You probably need them more than him. You've just picked up some magnesium. This item is stored in the bottom left corner of the screen above your character portrait. Use magnesium to heal your morale if you have morale damage. It's a dock worker's ID, doubling as a shift card and a job permit. A young, able-bodied man stares back at you from the photo. Santiago S. John. Cool. Physical instrument will surely fail. Interfacing. Your fingers find their way into the shackle, flick it open its spring loaded gate. The metal loop holds the plastic ID, heading with a bound pocketbook. The man emits a loud snore. Is he about to wake up? Doesn't look like it, but you never know. Better be quick. You slip the plastic ID card out of the loop and pocket it. The man, just for the record, you look nothing like the man on the document. You find a black paper note with a woman's profile on it. Seems like this woman lived centuries ago. The note says, five, real. It feels nice and greasy. Close the the sleeping dock worker has little Caribbean. to say about your actions. He remains silent. So... Who is this man guy? In an orange bomber jacket is tapping his foot on the floor as you approach. He narrows his eyes and extends his hand on the sleeve of his bomber jacket as well as on its back. Are the same enigmatic white rectangles as on your blazer. Hello. This is I'm Kim Kisuragi, Lieutenant, Prison 57. You must be from the 41st. You realize he's waiting for your name. Conceptualization, medium level, invent name for yourself, okay? Concentration makes you squint your eyes. Your name should be deep gold and orange, like a forest fire looming on the horizon, but mixed with the stench of liquor rising from your breath. You're two steps closer to it. But there are still many to go. It's not yet time. Okay then. It looks like we had a little scheduling error on Sunday. Saturday too, or two. Have you had time to talk to the manager here? What he means is, he has been trying to meet up with you for two days. But you have been otherwise occupied. If you don't mind, we should talk to him again. Ask him for a rundown of the area. Now that I'm here as well. I understand the scene is all back, right? It also wouldn't hurt to assure him the police are finally here. In full force, I mean. Have you mapped out the initial interview? Good. But even if you haven't, we'll have time for that after we take a look at the coroner's case. All right, of course. So it doesn't matter what we answer, this answer will be saved, it will save you. Have you removed the dead body from the tree? So the body is still in the tree where it has been hanging for seven days straight. We should go there as soon as we are done talking to the owner. Talk to the manager. Then we go out back and take the body down. Let's get going then. Officer, if you're about to embark on an investigation, shouldn't you have a badge? You mean you don't have a badge? Oh, if you didn't have your badge, then that would be very bad. You would need to report it on my shortwave. But since you do have it, 
We can go straight to the desk at hand. Continue. Lieutenant Kitsuragi is now in your party. You can talk to him whenever by interacting with him. So... I think I'm really... I really am... Uh, I really am... I really... I'm really a detective. The question is... Where is my detective badge? The man with the unimpressive beard notices you approaching. He drops the ledger he was holding and turns to the lieutenant. Mr. Gart, right? <coughs> you run this place. Yes. I am Kim Kitsuragi from Prison 57. This is an inter-district investigation. So joining me from Prison 41. What? Right. Now, I know it took us a while to arrive at the scene. It also took you a while to call us and report the dead body. It was you who placed the call, yes? No, I only just got here. It was probably Sylvie who called you. She usually works the bar here. I'm only temporarily taking over her duties. Do you have her number? As a matter of fact, I do. This sounds like something you can use to call this Sylvie later. You said you just got here. From where? Are you a local? What? Of Martinez? No. I live in Jamrock. I only sometimes come here to keep an eye on the place. This is just one of the many, many cafeterias I manage. But you still know your way around. Yes? In case we need directions. Yes, I know where some things are, but as I said, I don't live here. I just used to work here. And I'm not going to start working here again, if that's what you think. I didn't imply that. Detective. It probably means this is where you step in and ask your questions. His face expresses profound doubt in your having this. Ask him about the body's location before asking if he killed him. People give up information in the more innocuous question, which you can later use in the more sinister ones, not vice versa. Behind this building is a courtyard. They hoisted him up on a tree there. That's easy. See that door there? First you exit through that. Then to your right, you should see a big hole in the fence. A really big one. You can get to the courtyard through there. No need for the keys. The hole is big enough for the franco nigerian cavalry to fit through. <laughs> this man means the heavy cavalry of the innocent franco negro sweeping over the plains and nations of the enemies of mankind. Fifth century style. Unified currency and the concept of cool came in their way. They wore lamella and carried guns. But first and foremost, Franco-Nigerian heavy cavalry was really, really wide. That hole in the fence must be enormous. <coughs> in essence, Franco-Nigerian. Well, these terms I've never heard of these terms, ever. It's not like I'm the book reading type, but at least there must be something that somewhere, somehow, I have encountered these terms. Maybe, maybe because it is France. She went away because none of your business. Have they not been telling you you're a cop? Yeah. 
Okay, you got me. She went away because of the dead body out back. And because I asked for her number. That's why Sylvie went away. I hope you appreciate that. Thank you. I asked an employee out. She didn't want to come, but felt obliged to. It was a bad idea. Now, what is so goddamn fascinating about that for you? It's got nothing to do with the lynching. Good for you. Uh, was there something else? I'd like to get back to what I was doing. I don't know who killed him. I'm not the police. That's your job. This is it. He said they hoisted <coughs> up on a tree. Who is this they, if he doesn't know? Uh, oh, people are saying it was the Union dock workers, that it was a lynching. The locals, the customers, the people who eat here, a lot of dock workers eat here. Sylvie told me everyone knows the dock workers did it. Did the debarders themselves tell her this, or is it a rumor? I don't really know. You'll have to ask her. Why would the dock workers lynch this man? I would suppose it's because they have nothing better to do. You mean the strike? Yes, the strike. The man they hanged was a security guard for the harbour company, I hear. A mercenary. The Unionists probably thought they'd send a message. What are you, crazy? Of course I didn't kill him! The lieutenant turns the page in the little notebook he's been scribbling in. It's gone. Not so fast. You owe me 130 real. One moment you're running like the wind, then you've suddenly turned around and are giving him the finger, furiously, with both hands. Why? Watch out! I should have done that. Everything goes dark. Back so soon. It was no accident. Those were disco moves from your spinal cord. The spinal cord has yet to reveal itself to you. Its mysteries are unholy mysteries. I don't know that just come of this lazy effort of reconceptualizing the antique of Shambling Tron. If it comes off like that, it's because it is, and you are. Ouch. I was wrong to let you go. I should have kept you here. Is it bright where you are? Is it terrifying? What Ter do you what mean? mean? What do I mean? Are you okay? You have sustained a trauma to your lower neck. In addition, you have strained your left trapezius muscle. Pain surges down your back when you... The chair took the brunt of it. Don't worry. Are you sure, ma'am? Yes, yes. Sir, I didn't... I didn't mean for this to happen. I'm sorry. This has always been a cop-friendly place. The drinks are on the house, okay? He's shaken. Barton now, and he'll cave in. Don't thank me yet. You still owe me a hundred real. If you don't have it by tonight, I just can't let you up there. And for God's sake, watch out for yourself.
Okay. Let's check everything out first. Talk to police. The RCM in Martinez. What can I help you with? Of course. What can I help you with? Of course. Where to? Oh, that. That's right there. Even all the way over here, there's a drop of death in the spring. What do you mean? Yes, sir. District of Martinez. This intersection is called Roundabout North. Okay. He knows where we are. He just wants directions. There's the pier, the Cape Side apartment buildings, some more tenements, not a lot really. The harbor gates, some kind of commotion, I think. I don't follow the local politics. A fleet store too. Okay. Uh, what's in north of the east? What's in the south? Some shops and a bridge. The canal bridge leads to the coast, but it's broken, I think. Some kind of accident probably. Just coast. There's a little fishing village there and a fish market. But that got closed down ages ago. Okay, what's in the rest? It's just water. No, actually, I think they call it the Martinez Inlet. There are some islands in the bay, but they're hard to reach. No problem. She's very well composed. Back straight. Excuse me? Oh, well, I didn't write it there. I'm just sitting here. I don't know anything about that either. As I said... Pig is a widely used term, but... No need to worry. We are not saying you do. Okay. Well, me? I am just a gardener. She hides it well, but behind the sweat and dirt there is something else. Is there? The quickness of the reply certainly does not prove you wrong. I am working. I have a greenhouse in the yard there. I've been trying to get some work done. Well, as you already know, there's a corpse there, hanging from a tree. Don't worry, miss. We are here to clean. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Salts? Ammonia salts? Perhaps useful for them. Of course. I will if there's a corpse, then you're going to need those gloves for the autopsy. Sure, keep them. I have another pair. Might not be glove. Where's the glove? Hat, kiss. Glove. Gates up the street are shut tight. No explanation given. Workers on strike, scabs agitating, all around clusterfuck. Meanwhile, we're all stuck here in long haul limbo for days upon days upon days. Oh, feels like forever. 
Like I was born on this here roundabout and this was all I ever knew. Just me and the metal and the tires, the oil and the fumes and mazout. Mazout is an antiquated term for heavy few oils. This man has a barely suppressed performative streak. Or he just likes unusual words. Or both. Yeah, imagine. It's been a whole week already. So tell me, what do you need? Huh? Oh, no, I ain't got any money. They don't want to pay for unfinished work. The bosses, man. Makes sense. It sucks is what it does. He ain't one of us drivers, I know that. All accounted for. Otherwise, I haven't really asked about that. Been wasting time right here. Keep him busy. Okay. It's easy to see he's telling the truth. He's kept his nose out of the dark stuff. Okay. The man taps his fingers rhythmically against his arm. Oh, high grade narcotics, illegal firearms, stuff like that. Relax. He's merely joking. Can't even get a few jokes past you, my man. I've got another haul of foul cargo. Mostly sporting goods, track suits and that kind of thing. They usually get shipped to Grad in the Oxygen. Though we've been making headway in the Il Moran market lately. The man taps his fingers rhythmically. Don't be a stranger. Before you stands a motor carriage. The bodywork is covered in blue and white livery, bearing the number 57. Vapor emanates from the large engine on the back of the vehicle. It, this must be the infernal machine that tore you from oblivion. The Cupris Kinema motor carriage. In the cabin, you are welcomed by a set of steering levers, a radio microphone on a hook, a pull-out toolbox under the seat, and the soft glow of the fuel preheater gauge. A scent of leatherwork and heavy fuel oils washes over you. Okay, pick up the radio. The frequency tablet lights up, and the green button labeled Prime Line glows like a f the soft purr of electrical kittens. Radio waves cast far and wide over the metropolis. This is Precinct 57. Hello, Lieutenant. How may I assist? Hello, Alice. Please assist our colleague from the 41st Precinct here. I'm putting him up. Operating the radio is easy. Just be confident. You've probably done it a thousand times. This is Officer Alice Demetri, Precinct 57. How may I assist you? Under the green prime line, a yellow saved button catches your eye. You wonder what the lieutenant's default radio station is. Just a second, officer. After a while, you hear an old man greet you from the radio. His stretchy voice is completely familiar. Delta two, Delta five. This is forty first coming over. Just Pidu. 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 I don't know. The man uses relay code. You got this. You're a cop, and cops know relay code. Ten four message received. Ten five relay message. What's your status, Bover? Ten eighteen. State your message, sir. But you say. Never mind. 10-9, over. 10 message received. This is a very serious situation. I need to 10 to the... Is it him? What does he want? Says he lost his badge and needs to report it. He what? He lost his badge? Who lost his badge? Dick fucking Mullen. Who do you think? 
It's off of the Dick Mullen from the best seller, Dick Mullen and the Lost Identity. Dick Mullen is not your name. It's the name of a fictional detective who would not lose his badge. Defend yourself. Immediately. They laugh at you. He's asking you to stop. Says this is serious. Of course it's serious. He lost his fucking badge. Satellite officer Vic Mark Conkers, losing your badge is serious. Over. He says this has probably happened to other policemen before him and laughs uh, sarcastically. Oh god damn it. Is he fucking kidding? The whole station's gonna be dicked for this. Satellite officer Vic Mark is wondering if you might be joking and adds that this tarnishes the reputation of the entire station. Over. Mon dick 10-4, I hear you, officer. I'm just going to make a note here that you are in pursuit of your misplaced badge. Over. Fuck me! Back! Come here! You got to hear this! Dick Mullen lost his badge! What's going on? Super Garpe lost his badge. He lost his what now? His badge. He lost his goddamn fucking badge. He asks you to please stop saying he lost his badge. Why? Did he find it? <laughs> Sergeant Parson was wondering if you found your badge yet. <laughs> um, you don't have a combat. Sorry. It's hard to think. He's not replying. Looks like he's still looking for... 10-9, come again. I didn't get that. Over. No heights even for captains. Ask him. <laughs> Ask him if he's lost his gun. <laughs> Sergeant Parson wants to know if you left your... Check your pockets. Check your... Holy fuck. You don't know where it is, do you? No. It's gone. 10-9, coming officer. You get my question? We were wondering about your gun. Oh. Lying? Over the phone? It's easy. Just say it like it's the truth. He says he didn't. Thank God for that. That would have been a nightmare. I don't even want to imagine the poor losing his badge is bad enough. Tell him to find it and pass. We can't have some gangbanger ra We're all glad to hear you've not lost your gun, officer. You need further assistance. Over. Ten four, I hear you. I don't have the authority to rent you. What does he want now? He's asking for money. Is he fucking? I don't think he is. Don't give that asshole anything. He's just got... Right. Uh, that's a negative on the additional funds, sir. Uh, over. He says it's important to... He isn't getting a red cent. Request denied, sir. Over. <coughs> he says he's in trouble. Well, I guess he'd better crack the case before... Sir. Uh, Vigmar said... Uh, Um, what did he say? Did you want anything else, sir? Many of your colleagues are also here. Over. He's trying to keep you from further embarrassing yourself in front of your colleagues. Let us address them now, sir. Over. Uh, okay, ten four, sir. Wait, before you say anything stupid. Think it through. Be smart about this. Ask him. Ten four, sir. I'm not hearing your question. That's a negative, sir. I got the ten twelve visitors present here. Over. He wants to verify his information on... But of course, it says Dick Mullen, High General of the Revachonian Cavalry Force. Tell him to stop wasting time. What do you need, sir? Over. The 9 repeat message? I didn't get that, sir. Over. Sir, I will not have you talk to me in this manner. Over. Uh... 
What? What is it? He seems intoxicated and keeps asking me to... Mullen's drunk and emotionally aggressive. Wrap it up. Don't indulge in his drunken antics. Ten. Um... Excuse me, sir. Over. Uh, no, sir, I haven't. You're not really keen on mentioning your home life, so I've always assumed the things weren't... Ten for what? Does he actually want something, or is he help? He asked if he ever told me about his date before joining... For God's sake, cut this shit up! Sir, satellite officer Wittmer says... So, um, was there anything else? Okay, that's right, yeah. Sir, over. Over that, ten ten. Over and out. Okay, let's draw slides out for hundreds. Take what you need, officer. It's going to be a long case. I'm not protective of my The bribe useful for opening all sorts of doors. The handles are you can do good work. It's robust. Lets you see things. The pull-out toolbox slides back into it. The white suede feels luxurious under the touch. And the metal clutch handle so very familiar in your palm. As you tap on the gauge, the indicator pin jerks as if startled. There's no use pressing the... Translation. We're not going anywhere. Okay. So, guys... I think that's it. That is it for today. Um let's meet up let's meet again next time on Disco Elysium. Goodbye.